Hi guys. It is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, and I mean over the top beautiful, postcard perfect day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. We have made it to the last day of summer, where of course we had another hard frost here in Ithaca, New York, but we are technically in the last day of summer 2020. That would be Monday. September 21st, 2020, so uh, for my final, uh, my, my final chronicle of the collapse, and oh yes, this is Collapse Chronicles, I am Sam Mitchell, this is my little co-pilot Sancho Panza, for my final chronicle of the collapse before the fall of 2020, cranks up tomorrow on my 61st birthday. Uh, I just need to give a little bit of warning, <clears throat> particularly in the second half. I, we're going to talk about two stories today here on the mainstream media from good old USA Today. Good old USA Today. Good for them. Uh, Particularly, the second story is going to be about the C word, the corona panic. And I know some of you do not want to hear any discussion of the corona panic on this channel. I try not to go there, guys. So if you have zero interest, in hearing any chronicle of the collapse uh, that has anything to do with the corona panic, do not listen to this video and go back to uh, what, whatever else you were doing before you wandered over here. But uh, we're just going now this is a long article. I'm not going to be able to do the whole thing since I got two of them. Right out this morning from USA Today, uh, talking about how 2020 is an American nightmare that is wearing us out. Starting out with the words, it's too much. And I'm going to skip down about a fourth of the way through and pick up. Uh, we'll pick up here. Many of us are vacillating between horror and disbelief at what can only be described as an American nightmare. Devastation doesn't cover it. It is impossible to know if the worst is behind us or still ahead. This is USA Today, guys. USA Today on the uh, day before the fall of 2020. Yes, vacillating between horror and disbelief. Apart from our own suffering, and just for full disclosure here, uh, I don't talk about this much on this channel, but I am in the middle of, the, well, the beginning of the single darkest, deepest uh, clinical depression I have been in for years. I am uh, heading into a major depression myself. I'm hoping I will have the energy to keep doing these uh, videos, but if you don't hear from me, I'm simply too depressed to get out of bed. Uh, but anyway, <clears throat> that out of the way, apart from our own suffering, constant exposure to the suffering of others exacts a toll. Experts say what many of us are experiencing is disaster fatigue. So put another uh, glossary for the collapse term in your dictionary, disaster fatigue. Uh, 
Okay, this is Patrick Hardy, a certified emergency manager and risk manager. A certified emergency and risk manager. Quote, talking about disaster fatigue, it's a sense essentially of psychological overwhelm. You're being constantly bombarded with negative information it creates this sense of doom, close quote. That, that, that's exactly what uh, reality uh, creates, is a sense of doom. And it goes without saying that this article never mentions the real story creating a sense of doom. Uh, just talking about how all of these distractions, well, I guess the wildfires uh, are, are not a distraction, but everything else, uh, of course, the, the C word uh, being the number one one, uh, creating this sense of doom, it, it, it's, it's even the distractions, you get that bug like that, is that bug distracting you? This bug around Sancho's head, anyway. It creates this sense of doom. And when disasters occur sequentially, it can make it seem as though our problems are insurmountable. It's getting worse and worse, we think, and it's never going to get better. Thank you, USA Today, for the most honest reporting on the mainstream media. It's never going to get better. This American nightmare is as good as it's ever going to get from this point forward. Today is the best day of the rest of your life. It's never going to get better and you don't need to be a depressed collapsitarian uh, to understand that. Okay, a strict interpretation of the term disaster fatigue, Hardy said, puts disasters into three major categories. There's natural disasters such as hurricanes and the corona panic. The corona panic, according to this guy, is a natural disaster. Okay, then we have technological emergencies. Technological emergencies such as chemical spills and power outages. And of course, security emergencies such as acts of terrorism and active shooters. But Hardy said, that what qualifies as a disaster can also be subjective. Quote, what may be a disaster to someone else is not a disaster to you and me, he said. Y you know, like, uh, I consider the, uh, you know, the obliteration of all of our fellow earthlings off the face of the planet a disaster. That's just me. 99% of people on the planet apparently don't think of it as a disaster. Now there's a few people who consider the looming extinction of humans to be a disaster. I consider the looming extinction of humans to be uh, the single greatest fantasy that I can come up with in my dark. Uh, oh, shut up. I'm renting this uh, place out and I'm getting all of these, call I'm getting calls. So if anyone wants to rent this little place, uh, feel free to email me. Anyway, where were we? Uh, <clears throat> While all of us are tapped into the disasters that become national news, community events, 
can also add to the mental load a plant closing in your town that puts hundreds of people out of work is a disaster too. Many people are suffering and bearing witness to even more suffering, which can lead to yet another condition called compassion fatigue. You know, you can only have so much compassion at some point. Uh, you know, you just you just have to go pour another beer. Uh, this is Vale Wright, Director of Clinical Research and Quality at the American Psychological Association. Quote, compassion fatigue is really referring to the stress of the emotional strain of having that high level of empathy and exposing yourself to this level of suffering and when that happens over long periods of time, it can manifest in a variety of different psychological ways. And so then what they do, guys, is I don't know where they came up with these people. Uh, they just take a, ramble, a, a random survey, I guess. It doesn't explain how they chose these people. Some random survey of Americans, uh, j just how average your average fellow Americans are are coping with this, and and I'm not gonna uh, have time to. This is a long, involved article. We're just going to a uh, few highlights. Here's Lisa Phillips. 50, age 57, who lives with depression, says she is sick over what is happening to her country. Uh, to cope, Phillips uh, <laughs> went back to counseling and increased her medication. Yes, this is the number one way of coping with this is to pump your brain full of more antidepressants, antipsychotics, whatever. Uh, quote, it kind of feels like something else cannot, like when something else cannot possibly happen, it does. I put one foot in front of the other, but it takes quite a bit of effort, close quote. Political differences have also now divided her family. Uh, stress and conflict are her new normal. Quote, I don't feel apathetic, I feel overwhelmed and I am very discouraged about the polarization in our country. I am fearful we won't get back to who we were. Thank you uh, for pointing that out. Okay, let's hear from 36-year-old Matt Wonderly, uh, who is in the middle of building a technology startup when he went into lockdown, and now he is surrounded by wildfires. Quote, in the beginning, I think we were all kind of sheepishly laughing about this, like, what's going on? As a country, we are sort of being slowly unwoven. This is why I have often referred to the United States of America as the untied states of America. We are literally coming apart at the seams, literally. The United States is becoming untied. Any seams holding this country together uh, are coming apart. And uh, this, this is not a, a, a survey of doomsday prophets here, okay? 
you don't have to uh, interview uh, ecologist, wildlife biologist, and whatever. This is some uh, normal guy uh, starting a tech startup company talking about uh, continuing, quote, it's a very stressful time for me as a founder, an entrepreneur, a husband, a father, a neighbor, thinking about all the calamity around me and what is next? Well, brother, Mr. Wonderly, you won't have to wonderly for long. Okay, what is on the mind of Christina Cuevas, who lives with her husband and two sons in Gardena, California, and recently recovered from postpartum depression, you know, that thing that, that when women have kids, probably subconsciously they understand that they have just committed an outrageous act of child abuse by bringing a child onto this planet. And, uh, this, you know, postpartum depression. Okay. Uh, she is now having panics, panic attacks. She is stressed about her family's business and she's worried for her children and their futures. Quote, every day you're bombarded with something new. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, right now, she says, quote, there is no hope. Right now, she says, there is no hope for her, for her children. Okay, what's on the minds of the 20-somethings? How about Abby Barton, 26, lives in New Orleans, which is often hard hit during the hurricane season. Okay. Quote, we're in the peak of hurricane season, and there is no outlet for stress fatigue. Can 2020 just be over? Yes, defeat, she says, seems all around her in, uh, in New Orleans this week. I've had people say to me, I was exhausted by everything before the hurricane season. If it gets me, it gets me. Yes. Barton worries about what her city, in some ways already unrecognizable, may look like when the corona panic is finally over. Quote, walking downtown, you don't hear the music anymore. There you go. And, okay, another 20. What are the 20-something fathers thinking about uh, at the last day of summer 2020? Here is Austin Sargent, age 29, is an English teacher and high school football coach in South Carolina. There are times he feels overwhelmed, but mostly he's focused on his students who often seemed par who often seem paralyzed by their circumstances. Uh, yep. Uh, anyway, then we look at 48 year old Denise Williams from San. Leandra, California, blah, blah, blah. Uh, okay, I like, I like Denise's. Uh, 
It's not only that 2020 is a dumpster fire, it's that there is no one around me who I can really relate to or talk about it. Yes. 2020, a dumpster fire. Uh, my coworkers will say, how are you? And I'll say, it is tough. They're like, hang in there. We're all in this together. But we're not. I want to say you have no idea. Okay, but anyway, let's, uh, how is USA Today advising us how to rot, resist, defeat? Psychologist Hardy says when feeling overwhelmed, look for positive news stories. They are out there, even if they're difficult to find. Quote, there are stories of people surviving disasters, people doing the right thing, people enduring, he said. <coughs> uh, yes. So much of what feels surreal and absurd about this moment is how much it, it is out of our control making a plan making a plan for what to do in a disaster or even what to do to feel productive amid the chaos can help rest back some control. The greatest danger, experts say, is a descent into apathy that people will start be to believe that the things they do don't matter. This is, uh, I can't remember which uh, Ms. Wright is. Quote, what if everybody just gave up? Then the world would really be in trouble. Individual actions do count because they accumulate. The worst thing that we could do now is throw up our hands and say nothing matters. So why even bother? Because if every single person did that, what would this world look like? <laughs> oh God, but anyway, uh, then of course, uh, in the middle of this article, they, uh, they have links to other articles and I actually touched on this one a few weeks ago, uh, but, but since it's specifically talking about the corona panic, I didn't get too deeply into it, but I just want to read to refresh your, your, your memory here. Uh, this also from USA Today at the end of June, uh, headlined, a culmination of crises, America is in turmoil and a mental health crisis looms next. Little dog, we got a little bit more to go. The science is screaming. Americans are in turmoil. More this, at the end of June, and you better believe all of these numbers have risen. <clears throat> at the end of June, more than 80% of U.S. adults report the nation's future is a significant source of stress, according to a report from the American Psychological Association. Americans are the unhappiest they have been in 50 years, according to some new poll back in June, and a survey published in June in the medical journal, in the journal for the American Medical Association, found that three times as many U.S. adults reporting symptoms 
of serious psychological distress in April as they did two years earlier. Uh, there you go. Uh, I'm trying to avoid all the mention of the C word, uh, but it, uh, it, it's hard to do. They're talking about, uh, back in June, about how the pandemic uh, could push suicide and drug deaths, you know, through the uh, roof. America is a nation unmoored, and experts say for many people the negative mental health impacts will outlast the current crises, plural, and that was before the wildfires and everything else that has happened since June in this country. Uh, research suggests the extreme stress triggered by these events may even lead to long-term psychiatric disorders. The nation must prepare for the mental health crisis that looms next. Uh, just, I'm really just going to close this quote. This is, close this rant with this quote. Jamie Diaz Granados, Deputy Chief Executive Officer uh, and Acting Chief Scientific Officer at the American Psychological Association, quote, we are facing a culmination of crises unlike anything we have seen in our lifetimes in corona panic, economic turmoil, racism. Each of these crises are taking a heavy psychological toll on Americans uh, and the health consequences could be dire. As we look toward the future, we need to consider the long-term implications of this collective trauma. And that was three months ago. And I think the implications of this collective trauma are beginning to play out and they are really getting ready to go into overdrive beginning tomorrow with on day one of the fall of 2020 uh, with this election uh, quite easily could lead us into this this quote martial law civil war mad max whatever you want to call it, so you better get out there and enjoy the last day of summer 2020 because uh, in, in a few weeks looking back uh, on the shitstorm of the summer of 2020 from the middle of the fall of 2020, what happened uh, in the past three months is going to look like the good old days this is the last of the good old days. I wish I could join you in getting out there and enjoying it while I still can. But uh, how I even found the energy for this rant, uh, I have no clue. I am going to go res resume my po uh, fetal position in this uh, chair I pulled out of the garbage. And, and curl up uh, and wait uh, for my happy birthday tomorrow and uh, figure out where I'm going to get the energy to get out of bed on my birthday. Bye guys. Yes, we're done ranting now.